Turtle and Hughes presents The Power of Partnerships. Ross Kennedy, founder of Exotherm, joins us today to talk about the Industrial Internet of Things, utilizing conditioning monitoring sensors to transmit data over secure networks to enable unprecedented new efficiencies in the operation and maintenance of electrical equipment. Ross, tell us a little more about Exotherm and how you came up with Exotherm and what made you invent this product. Thanks, Tom. Exotherm came about because pre-2000, in the late 90s, uh, I was selling handheld infrared equipment for electrical inspection. This actually predated the introduction of thermal windows as well. And as I went around, people would say to me, oh, if only we could put the IR inside the uh, electrical enclosures. So that got me thinking. And to cut a very long story short, we came up with a, an invention, which was uh, the first unpowered infrared sensor that delivered a delta T i.e. The, the rise in temperature of the joint over the local ambient. We introduced that uh, as a prototype in, our, I think it was 2002, and we did our first uh, installations in, I think, 2004. I have to say that at the time, we were recognized by many people as a great solution, but ahead of its time. We were the right product at the wrong time. We were just too early for the market acceptance. Uh, thankfully, in the intervening years, that's changed. And now we're the right product at the right time. Exotherm is uniquely positioned as a company because you identified customer challenges and developed some innovative solutions. Tell us about Exotherm and your technology. Exotherm has now grown into becoming a global specialist in 24-7 thermal monitoring of electrical infrastructure. We have a history of excellence and innovation, and Exotherm uh, Thermal Monitoring collects real-time temperature data from a variety of electrical assets. It delivers reduced downtime via that um, predictive maintenance. We detect faults in advance of failure by monitoring 24-7. That also means there's enhanced safety by removing people from places of risk. There's cost savings in reduced maintenance and inspection costs. And just generally uh, looking now to the future with the industrial internet of things, it also dovetails with that in being a part of that jigsaw of hardware that is necessary for IoT to work. We've got a, a suite of products. Uh, we have infrared sensors. We have sensors which are specifically designed for monitoring the temperature of cable terminations and lugs. We have uh, data cards which utilize uh, Modbus uh, protocol, so it's an industry standard, well proven. We've now got panel mounted HMI so people can see what's going on inside. Um, and that all ensures that we can provide scalability, accuracy, and perhaps most importantly of all, reliability. And we provide clients now all around the world with water industry, data centers, oil and gas, power utilities, healthcare, mining, marine, I can go on and on, but um, we're providing them all with long-term solutions. I mentioned innovation and our latest innovation was the um, Exotherm low voltage MCC in bucket thermal monitoring solution. It's supplied in a simple, uh, just three components, kit form, and it's a fit and forget product which provides electrical engineers with the three what I call must haves. When does a problem exist? Where is that problem? And how serious is the problem? And it can be fitted and retrofitted to any OEM bucket as a simple retrofit. And by the way, that product, that Exotherm MCC in bucket monitoring solution, it just won the mission critical top tier product of the year award in the power products category. I've noticed with some oil and gas companies are leaning toward unmanned facilities. These companies want to install switchgear and MCC and walk away and not do any preventative maintenance. 
But what they want to do is more toward predictive maintenance. How is Exotherm a good fit for predictive maintenance? We've had success with clients across many industries, and it's been transformational to see the way they deal with managing and maintaining their electrical infrastructure. And with Turtle and Hughes, we have got a community that's very collaborative and likes to share knowledge, and particularly its knowledge with or about innovative technology, such as Exotherm. As you know, power failures can affect all types of industry and result in, in costly disruption, downtime, as well as repair to equipment and its replacement sometimes. And of course, there's also the added risk of injury or fatalities in some cases to personnel. So thermal condition monitoring of critical electrical assets helps to improve performance in all of those areas, whilst at the same time reducing OPEX costs. Turtle and Hughes and Exotherm knew we could help bridge some of those gaps occurring between organizational strategy and the desire to implement new technology that can help bring change to day-to-day -day engineering operations and maintenance. And we could do that by simply helping customers to understand how they can start with um, the tactical implementation and installation of sensor technology, but with one eye to the future plan of where they're going with digitization. The ever-evolving landscape of automation and controls, as well as switch gear and power distribution equipment, is at the heart of what Turtle and Hughes does. Can you explain Exotherm's role as a top-tier solution? Exotherm has thermal monitoring solutions for medium voltage and low voltage uh, switch gear. As I've mentioned, LV uh, MCC in bucket solutions. We also do transformers. Um, PDUs, UPS. It's the mission critical element of the electrical infrastructure that is important to install monitoring within. I mean, if we look at um, electrical infrastructure in general, it, it's a, a fact that as it ages, inevitably, so the rate of failure increases. And with that, the resulting cost of those failures. So by Introducing thermal condition monitoring, we can reduce this incidence of failure by detecting it in advance of the failure. There was some recent research by Gartner and Wall Street Journal, which identified that monitoring, as opposed to periodic inspection, will detect 70% more failures. That's a huge number. And all of the exotherm products are OEM neutral, and they're ideally suited to retrofit to aging equipment. And it doesn't need to have comms. We can provide HMIs and status LED lights to overcome situations where you've got old equipment that doesn't have comms. We can still give you visual indication of faults. Hey, Ross, where do you see Exotherm going in terms of new product development? We were the first company to introduce a, a non-powered infrared sensor that enabled it to be installed within electrical equipment. We were the first company to invent a cable sensor that also did the same output signal, delta T, without any computational help as the IR sensor. We invented the MCC uh, monitoring solution. All of these are unique. We invented load map, which enables load related thermal alarms. All I'll say at the moment is we ain't done yet. And we have at least three other monitoring applications, which we will be introducing probably within the next 12 month period. For our listeners who may not be as familiar, can we identify some of the issues that current inspection methods have? First of all, I'd say that exotherm is an evolution as opposed to a revolution. An evolution works. I'm old enough to remember when electrical inspection of a panel was with your hand. Then that moved to the introduction of uh, thermal imaging cameras. But you were only taking the temperature on the outside of the panel because IR cannot see through solid objects, uh, with one or two exceptions. Then came the introduction of thermal windows. Window was a very clever term because in most people's mind, it means it's transparent that you can see 100% of the IR transmission through it. The sad fact is the best IR transmitters are around about 70%. They cut out 30% of the IR transmission and they deteriorate over time. 
So that means that if you don't know what the transmission is, you can't have an accurate result. Another issue would be annual inspection uh, of MCC. How do you do that? You can't use a thermal imaging camera on the outside because within the bucket, there's too many uh, components in the way of the critical connections. Okay, so we'll de-energize. Now you've got downtime in order to do the inspection. And by the time you've actually de-energized and got access to the bucket, you'll find the heat, the majority of the heat will have dissipated. So you, you're kind of wasting your time. And uh, that's why the, the monitoring of, of the, the bucket, the in-bucket monitoring is such a, an advance. As I say, there's annual inspections. Okay, if you're a 24-7 operation, one day per year is less than 1% of your operational uptime. Power will be your most critical utility. No power, you're not doing whatever you were doing. And yet it's only less than 1%. Whereas monitoring is 100% of uptime. There's no real comparison. Customers are worried about cybersecurity when it comes to the industrial internet of things and cloud. How do you compare the security of exotherm sensors versus the other sensors that are on the market? If, if you accept the concept that there is a global shift from periodic inspection to continuous monitoring, and that's coming and is being driven by digitization, IIoT, whatever you want, industry for, whatever you want to call it, that's what's driving it now as well. And it's focusing attention on the benefits of monitoring as opposed to inspection. If you accept that that change is inevitable, that you, you do need to be doing it or at least considering it now, the next most important decision you will make is what sensor technology to apply. And you need to be very careful that you, you consider the application when looking at what technology, sensor technology to install. All of the exotherm sensors are specifically designed for installation and monitoring of electric. It's very important that you remember the purpose of installing these sensors is to find faults before they develop, but to reduce maintenance or inspections. So any sensor which then requires any form of maintenance or even replacement during the, the life of the asset is going to incur you in significant extra costs. As an example, consider a wireless technology which is currently being marketed. And if you read the manual, you'll see that it requires maintenance every two years. That would be an additional 12 um, shutdowns just to maintain the sensor over a 25 year life of the asset. So even if they gave you the sensors, it's still gonna cost you a lot of money. The key is to insist on a sensor technology where it's going inside electrical equipment, where the whole objective is not to open up the panel. What you need to insist on is a sensor technology that can prove a level of reliability such that it offers a lifetime warranty of zero maintenance, proven accuracy, no cyber security risk. Now, you mentioned this a moment ago, and perhaps I'll come on to that in a second, but more specifically, but wireless sensors are a cyber security risk. It's an acknowledged risk. And some of the wireless technologies out there can be are employing wireless protocols, which are known to be easily hacked e.g. Zigbee. Exotherm sensor technologies resolves all of those issues. It's a non-contact sensor for bus monitoring. We don't touch the bus. We don't touch the conductors. We have purpose-built cable sensors for monitoring cable terminations. The sensors are deliberately hardwired for longevity and reliability and no cybersecurity risk. And as I say, it's a simple commissioning process, and they're suitable for um, all LV, MV, MCCs, transformers, PDUs, as I said. And as I mentioned earlier, we haven't stopped innovating. There's more to come. 
What do you see as the more specific operational benefits to clients of moving from periodic thermal imaging to continuous thermal monitoring of their electrical infrastructure? Well, I think the operational benefits are that you, it, depending on the, the type of equipment, first of all, as I've said earlier, the, the key benefit would be that if it's mission critical, you incur high downtime cost or so on, then if you're carrying out annual thermal inspections, you're actually inspecting less than one day per year. I use an analogy which says, wait a minute, I mean, comparing that kind of inspection to monitoring is a bit like saying, well, I'm going to compare a fire suppression system to a guy turning up one day a year with a fire extinguisher. There's no comparison. So in terms of risk versus cost, I would say that the, the case for the monitoring is a slam dunk because over the life of the asset, you will save considerably more than you would by uh, annual inspections. The, the other things are, of course, um, NFPA 70E is becoming more and more accepted as the, the guide to the practices that should be followed. And it's quite clear that the, the objective is to remove people from a place of risk. That means that with monitoring, you're not asking people to be suited up and stood in front of a place of risk with personal protection equipment. Now, if you've ever watched any videos of an arc flash, then you'll be very well aware that it's, um, it's a very hostile environment. Molten copper traveling at 700 miles per hour, a, an explosion in terms of decibels that'll probably burst your eardrums. The, the blast wave will probably blow you across a room. So if someone said to me, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand in front of here and open that panel up for inspection or whatever. Um, don't worry, you'll be suited up. Uh, no, thank you. Not when there's a choice of saying, no, 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 no. We could put sensors in there and remove people from that place of risk entirely. And that's a big advantage to organizations. For many of our listeners, sensor technology for the electrical infrastructure may be a new consideration. What advice would you give them in selecting the right technology? There's a lot of uncertainty as to what technology should I be using and how should I do it, even where should I monitor, etc. We can provide, uh, and it's available through Total and Use, we can provide guidance on where the monitoring points in medium voltage, low voltage, switch gear, uh, MCCs, UPS, where should you place the sensors? We can go give you guidance on that. In terms of what should I be looking for, uh, if you like, a shopping list of sensor technologies, I would say head and shoulders above everything else is reliability. What you do not want is any sensor that you're going to put in there that itself then requires maintenance or replacement, because that's building in huge operational downtime costs in order to carry that out, when the objective was to reduce it. The other thing I'd say is you don't, you don't want a wireless sensor. Some people have sort of queried that with us and said, well, you know, what, what, what damage can a little temperature sensor do? If a temperature sensor is hacked and the readings are altered such that it's telling you there is an imminent failure due, that means you're going to shut down to try and deal with that and save the explosion, the fire, the whatever. That means you've incurred all the downtime. It can also act as a bridge. It can act as the bridge into the network. And that, again, means that some malignant type of uh, motive could be to go in and access the network via wireless sensors. It's a risk which does not exist if you have hardwired sensors. And so I guess my, my message would be you want to have a sensor which has proven accuracy. Again, Exatherm has been tested and all our claims validated by every major OEM, Schneider, Siemens, ABB, GE, uh, Eaton. They've all tested the product. They've all validated what we do. And they have all actually deployed our sensor in their equipment in worldwide projects. So basically, what we're saying is we can prove it. We have hundreds of thousands of sensors out there 
that are installed reliably. Um, in fact, funny enough, I was just looking, I read something the other day that McDonald's have stopped counting because they've sold over 100 billion hamburgers. We take more temperatures than that every year. For many organizations, IT will manage software and artificial intelligence being available to bring about the advantages of industrial internet of thing. So why is it essential to take action in changing hardware specifications right now? Would it be better to wait for greater availability of software and install sensors later? No, is the short answer. Um, think about it. The IoT revolution is happening. It's happening globally. This is not a question of if you will do it. It's a question of when you will do it. And you will do it because that's the way of the world. And if we look at the situation with IoT, then the advantages are significant. They include many, many aspects of the business, not just OPEX savings in terms of cost, but also the implementation of artificial intelligence. It's only at the beginning of, of its development at this point in time, but it will develop faster. We had a conversation with Chevron some years ago now regarding the TCO project, which we're uh, included within. It's, it was at, at the time, it was the largest oil and gas project in the world. And we spoke to the project manager about the number of sensors and how many points he was monitoring, et cetera. And we said, what are you gonna do with the, the data? How will you utilize the data? Now, don't forget, this was about four or five years ago now. And he said to us at that time, it doesn't matter. We were slightly puzzled by that. What do you mean it doesn't matter? And he said, it doesn't matter what I'm gonna do with the data. That's not the important bit right now. The important bit right now is I'm building uh, electrical equipment which will have a life of 25 to 30 years. If I don't put the sensors inside that equipment today, it means I cannot have the data when I want it. No sensor, no data. And if I don't put the sensors in, what I will have done is I will have built in obsolescence to brand new equipment. So to answer your question, Tom, why should people take action now? I think that the, the answer is in two parts. Firstly, if you do not start putting and specifying thermal monitoring sensors into your new build equipment, then what you're doing is every panel that's delivered, every switchboard that's delivered, you've just built in obsolescence to brand new equipment, and it will cost you in the future. Secondly, you have aging equipment in your estate, and that aging equipment will inevitably have an increased uh, incidence of failure. So it makes sense to put in monitoring to reduce the incidence of failure, extend the life of the asset, and reduce the OPEX costs, all of which you're still increasing safety in equipment which was degenerating. And I think we found, we found in some customers that when they've done their arc flash uh, incidence calculations, they're finding that some of the equipment, they can't actually inspect it even. They can't get close enough to do inspections. It's too hazardous. So the message is take action now. Not to take action now, you'll find it's going to be a strategic investment mistake. Turtle and Hughes has reviewed Exotherm and chosen it as a top tier technology, but maybe you can give our audience some reasons why they can be assured of exotherm technology. Sure, as I mentioned earlier, we've been fully tested and deployed by every major global manufacturer, OEM manufacturer of electrical equipment. We're in projects all over the world on every continent. We have so few warranty claims that we're able to back our claim of being the most reliable sensor technology in the market with a written lifetime warranty. We've heard claims from people, uh, sales guys going around with alternatives saying, oh yeah, don't worry, ours will last 20 years or whatever. Read the small print, read the, the warranty, the written warranty, one year. So I think that people can take heart if they're looking to 
well, how do I choose? How do I, how do I know? Look at our track record. It's a proven track record. Hey, Ross, thank you for taking the time today to discuss and share information about the increasing importance of industrial Internet of Things. As a partner, we look forward to sharing this technology with our customers and enabling them to transition from periodic inspection to continuous thermal monitoring of critical electrical assets. Good. Thank you, Tom. It was uh, nice to have the opportunity of sharing the, the knowledge base with um, Turtle and Hughes customers. And as I say, we thank you for that opportunity to inform people about the, the issue of thermal condition monitoring electrical equipment.